Hey people, welcome back to MCJ Studio. So, I hope that you had some great two holidays, that you had all the food to eat, that you had all the people around you, all the warmth, all the love that you could possibly get during this particular time. And for me, it was two of the most relaxing, non-active days that I could have for now really like i enjoy them there is another lockdown here in the netherlands and it will be lasting until the beginning of january i don't even know what date they have in mind for this one but let's say you know the lockdown is still busy they are still active and it's kind of hard to go outside or really visit the family and everything that is going on and i just want to keep my mind focused keep my mind at ease and also just give myself also the time to really relax and not worry or stress about anything. So I kept it really simple. You know, I stayed at home, I cooked, I, I love cooking. If I have the time to do so, I love cooking. So I did just that. For me, it was a great moment just to, you know, just ease on the pressure. Um, the year has been with a lot of pressure from different perspective different sides different angles and i'm noticing for myself that the last couple of weeks are i wouldn't say stressful for me but they are like the motor is coming <laughs> into a halt it's coming to a halt i'm not that active i'm not that high energy but inside of this there's a lot of energy and there's a lot of activities i'm still planning and strategizing i'm just you know taking the gas off it a little bit because yeah just because of the simple fact that i want that peace and i want to take the time and also want to listen to my body whenever it's saying listen you need to take your foot off the pedal a little bit you know take off the, you know take a little bit off the gas then i am so ready to do that and yeah, the holidays were just a good moment to do that. Maybe you were just not in a festive mode. Maybe this was just not the time for you to be festive at all. Listen, that's okay too. That is okay. I do hope for yourself that you have the ability at least to, you know, guide yourself through these type of moments. That you do have something that you can rely on, whatever it is. Something that is healthy, something that's productive in your way. Even if it's step by step, I do hope that you can do that for yourself. The festive moments can be very hard times and we still have like the end years um, switch like I like to call it the switch of one era, one period to the next period so that is one that still needs to come and we are celebrating it of course we're celebrating we are celebrating that of course in a way that is very unusual we have been doing that for the last two years so I do hope for those that are watching and you're not in a festive mode and you're like, don't know what to do, don't feel like it, have a perspective for yourself. Have something that you can look out forward to. It, it doesn't matter how big or small it is. It's not about the grandiose gesture or to impress other people or to feel that you are, you know, riding along with the wave, with the trends or keeping up with whomever you want to keep up. Please keep just a perspective for yourself that allows you to have that guidance in your life that keeps you on that path, right? I do feel more tired than I usually am. And I know that when this period comes, you know, the, the days are shorter. There's not a lot of sunlight. I'm more inside than I'm outside. It really is key for me to do active things so physical active things so for me that's dance that's jogging going outside just to get some fresh air you will be surprised what movement can do for you and what it can mean to you i believe that movement for me is the best way just to you know get that energy flowing in my body and for the last couple of weeks i have been struggling with that so it it didn't motivate me to do something really active within my studio, you know, and that's also a part of, I think, I think of this process and this journey. And 
Um, it's not something that I am ashamed about um, and I don't fight it either. I actually accept it and welcome it because maybe there is something in there that I need to learn. So I'm not, you know, being down on myself or having a negative perspective of, oh, I'm not doing anything. No, no. Apparently my body's giving off signs saying, hey, you know, just ease off the pressure. What I did do, because if you are me, then you cannot sit still for too long. What I did do is that I visited the art supply store. That is something that I always like to do. You know, I always like to visit the art supply store and this time I really needed to visit the art supply store because my brushes are busty, they're crusty, and they're bending all over. They're like going to the left, going to the right. It's like, what, 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 what do you want? Pick a side, please, pick a side. Most of the brushes that I have are not in the best conditions. And some of the brushes I have for a very long time, I'm talking about years. I'm not talking about a couple of months, people. I'm talking about years, okay? Years. We have a strong relationship with each other, all right? Strong relationship. As I was thinking, well, people, it's a lockdown. People are not that much outside. But it's going to be quiet in the art supply store. Hmm. Man, was I wrong. <laughs> I was so wrong about it. There was such a long queue in front of the store. The store that I go to here in the Netherlands is Van Beek. It's one of the many art supply stores that you can find in the Netherlands. As I am on my way to Van Beek and I come there, I just treat, I, I just see it as a trip, a small trip that I'm taking and I'm just being mindful of the trip. And I just let my mind go. I'm not thinking about, oh, I have to get this, I have to get that. I already know what I want. I already know where I'm going to, so no need to stress. So I really take it as movement, a fun activity, and not stressing myself about anything. Every time I step into the location that I go to, and there's another location, which is not straight across, but it's like across, of, of uh, where they are. Yeah, I like that location too, but I like this location more. It's, it's just a thing, it's the feeling. Anyway, standing in the queue, waiting for a basket to be uh, available, waiting for people to do their thing. And you know that people are gonna, you already know, people are gonna take their time doing what it is that they are doing. People are just gonna shop because they know it's, you know, day before Christmas and the, the second day of Christmas. So stores will not be open. There is a lockdown. People are going to take their time visit doing what they are doing. So I was kind of shocked with the queue. Anyway, it was my turn and I bought some new brushes. I bought the ones that are from the same brand of Fun Bake, which I actually love. However, I gotta be honest with you, I am ready to splurge a little bit more for some good quality brushes. I'm just feeling that. Not to say that these brushes are not high quality brushes, I'm just saying that I know there's better. I just feel it. I just, I just know that there are better quality brushes. And every time I scroll on the internet or scroll on social media and I look at what other artists are using, what brushes they are using, and I'm just lurking on their pages, I already know that I just have to have some good brushes, decent brushes that will go along a lot of, you know, longer, you know, and better quality, just, just a step higher. I had the same thing when I was working with canvases. I had the same thing when I was working with no paint, I, and now the brushes, you know, it's a turn of the brushes. I just have to switch it up, but I will take my time for it. I, I'm still gonna do my research because I haven't found anything that is gonna make me go like, whoop, whoop. Yeah. I haven't found anything yet. Um, I have used, however, the brand Da Vinci. And I do believe that that is a really good brand. I like that brand. It's like, mm, yeah, it's just a step higher than the than the store brand that you have. But it's with most th most things. Store brands are good. They are good because stores do want to put out something that is qualitatively uh, just you know up there. 
they don't want everybody talking about their brand and be like, oh, that's trash. Don't go over there because it's just that that, that thing is just doo-doo. Don't 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 buy it. They don't want that, of course. So the Fun Bake brushes are holding up pretty well, but they don't last me that long. They just don't. They don't, they don't, they don't. Even though I have most of them for a long time, yeah, eventually the, the brushes will just, you know, they will do their thing. And listen, it's um, inevitable. It is inevitable what will happen with brushes, right? That they will go left, right. <laughs> they will spread like this. I like this one. They will spread like this. They start like this and they just, they go from a one to a four. On a weekly basis, I have Instagram lives and I just, you know, discuss whatever it is on my mind. Maybe I have something to share. Maybe there's something that I uh, wanna talk about more in depth. Maybe there's some advice that I wanna give. Maybe there are some gems that I wanna share. Whatever it is on my mind and I find very um, interesting, but also entertaining. You know, for people to know or talk about, I do that in my Instagram live. So this time, the thing that I wanted to share was basically the end year sale that is now busy in my web shop. That was a shameless plug, by the way. So the end year's sale is now going on. And last week, or maybe the week before that, I was talking about it. I was talking about the end year sale. There's a 20% discount on the products that are available and for which it is applicable. So as I was talking about that, one of the viewers asked me what my opinion was about the high productivity that we now see in creative fields. So whether you're an illustrator or you know, you're a painter or a sculptor or whatever it is that you do on a creative field, that person asked about my opinion and how I was looking at it. And I found that such an interesting question because it is something that I've been noticing on social media a lot. And you see this high productivity level of, of uh, artwork being produced. And I think it's not even just the social media platform where you see it. I think it's also offline that you see it. And what do I mean with high productivity? What I mean with high productivity is that if you go beyond the standard and if you know for every artist it is of course different some artists can really pump out a new illustration or painting each and every single day some artists can do that period they can but in general it takes a little bit longer for most artists to come to the completion of their work but what you will see now is that there is a higher demand for people to produce the work uh, quicker, faster, but what I also see is that it needs to be more leaning towards the audience instead of towards the expression, the original, authentic expression of the artist. Now here's one thing, when you dabble on this platform called social media, there is of course this thing called engagement. There is this thing called of course, that people want to lean into your profile and they want to see something that speaks to them. So it it is not weird, it's not strange for artists to produce things in a very high level for the people that they want to attract to their pages, to their social media platform. It is not the easiest thing for artists to create a source of income when it comes to their creativity. You know, if you're one of the lucky ones that have a gallery that's selling your work or you're with an agency and you get to work in such a way where you can really make money of your creativity or someone else is taking on the task to really focus on creating that source of income for you, then, you know, that is a great thing. I think that for many artists, maybe not all, many artists, that is something that can help them go to a higher productivity level and also look at ways in which they can really express themselves and create work that they love to create, but also speaks to their audience. However, if you do not have that yet and you're really working towards that for yourself, it is easy then to fall into the trap that you have to produce things at a high level so that you, one, uh, are engaging with your audience and that you're producing things that they like so that you get the likes and then the engagement goes up and then you get more, you know, a bigger audience and then the possibility for selling more of your own work. 
gathering people more to your work, gathering them to your website, gathering to your portfolio, being seen, being recognized. Um, it, it, it expands the possibilities, expands the options. So it's a double-edged sword. Uh, it, it can be very unhealthy to be in that particular environment where you're just producing, 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 and producing the things that people like, but you're not really finding your own voice in your creativity, but you want to be noticed, you want to be seen. And the other side is um, sticking true to your own creativity, your own platform, and having to rely maybe on other sources of income to finance and to promote and stimulate your artistic career. I myself have chosen to not do that for me. I have thought about it uh, quite some time and sometimes the thoughts can creep into my mind like maybe if I just create more of this type of work then people will be more, you know, they would lean more to what it is that I do or maybe I would sell, sell more or maybe people would be more interested into it or maybe I would be picked up by art dealers or art galleries, whatever it is. But here's the thing, for myself, and I'm speaking directly for myself, but I would be very interested to also know what you think about it. So leave your comments here below. But for myself, I do believe that I need to be true to me. I have worked already so hard to develop my, my craft and the thing that I'm doing and what it is that I would like to explore within my own art practice. I've already worked so hard for it to discover it, to peel it and to, you know, dig into it and to see what it is that I can find in there. So for me now to go, towards a place where I am just pandering to a public, not saying that artists are doing that, but for me, it feels like pandering to a public or just to create things that other people like without taking my own vision into consideration um, or producing at such a high level that I would really burn myself out, which is something I don't want to be in because I know how that looks. For people, I've seen it from a close. I sometimes can have a feeling like this is a lot. This, this is much. This is so much. This is too much. But I have seen from a close what a burnout can do with a person. And it literally means that you will not have the opportunity to do whatever it is that you want to do. So I do not want to be in that place. So I. I make the conscious decision to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick true to what my voice is and I'm going to create my own lane. Are there disadvantages to that? Yes, there are disadvantages to that because that means that you might have to work on it a little bit longer. I might have to, to fall back on resources that not necessarily have anything to do with me creating the art, but it has to do with everything with me paying my bills. So yeah, that for me is, is um, I, I, I understand that. I'm very aware of that. Um, and it's also not that I'm excusing myself for that. I'm not ashamed for it either. I just believe that this is the lane that I've chosen to create for myself. This is the platform that I've chosen to create for myself. And I, here's the advantage of it. Just mention the disadvantages. The advantage is that I have a select group. This is my niche. These are the people that know this is what Marilfa create and that is what I like. I like that about her. I love it about her. It also makes me think in just in a different way. Like for instance, the podcast that I have where I talk about my, my you know, perspectives and sharing perspectives, but also sharing gems. Um, and other things, the YouTube channel, giving content visually about my journey. <laughs> because my camera was like, girl, you're done. I, I just look in different ways of how I can expand my craftsmanship or craft woman. Shit. 
when you're doing it too fast and you're not taking the time to see what it is that you're doing, you never get the chance to really evaluate where you are. You never get to say, well, this works, this doesn't work. This is for me, this is not for me. This is not something that I want to do. And I honestly believe that for me, I can say that. Um, so that is what fits me. Even though productivity is an important element of my artistic um, career, there has to be a certain level of productivity. And it will not be in a form where I am just, you know, constantly trying to keep up with the Joneses or FOMO or, you know, I have to do this or else people will forget about me or, I'm, you know, the, the next person will um, take my place or whatever it is. That type of competition, I don't have. I don't suffer from that. No. And I'm happy that I'm not suffering from that. So yeah, I thought it was a really interesting question to ask. And a lot of times we can be in a position where we're like, am I the only one who's noticing this? But it's a good thing that I wasn't the only one who's noticing it. And that is what a platform is for. That is also what the, the, the Instagram life is for. For the people that have been watching my videos but haven't subscribed yet, which I don't understand. I mean, come on. <laughs> so for now, I'm going to say have a blessed day. I will see you next time. Ciao. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.